and your inside the ride. This is Alphonse de la Mota. And this week we are chatting up about uh, our my favorite song in the mix that I just put out, which is available on iTunes. Make sure you go get that. Uh, it's just search inside the ride, T H A, the ride, uh, and get that mix. It's a 30 minute weekly mix that I put out. But anyways, the song that I'm talking about is Slam by none other than Pendulum. Uh, this song came out uh, from when I got here, September 19th, 2005. Some of us remember partying in 2005. Some people were already chilling at the crib. Some cats, I mean, really weren't even born, maybe. I don't know. Anyways... There was a, it was a solid tune and Pendulum pretty much uh, elevated the the game. Uh, they kind of followed what I think uh, Ronnie Size and Represent started, um, which was the live band aspect. Uh, Pendulum, from what I understand, moved from Australia to England just to work on music because they showed a lot of potential. And I think... Uh, what is it? Break the chaos. Uh, took them out to England, put them up, and helped them work on some music. And that is this tune, Slam. Which for me, when I heard it, I was raving, doing acid. I was having a good time. We were throwing parties, and it kind of changed uh, how I spun. And for that. I'm internally grateful regardless of what people say about commercial drawing base and all that bullshit. This shit is dope. And in this week, we all know it's a bye-bye to the orange piece of shit president that we had, uh, Donald Trump, lost. Uh, I know they're trying to do all this kind of dumb shit and trying to be, trying to say that... Uh, there's counts that are wrong and all this other stuff. They can count them, recount them, triple count them. They took like four days, four or five, I don't know, I forgot. It was so long just to get the freaking uh, answer and to get us the the numbers. They're saying the news is pre, you know, it was um, calling it early, but all the news was doing was reporting numbers and they knew once he hit that 270, that was it. It was his thing. And I'm not even like, I hate numbers and I hate specifics. And for me to know that it was a number 270 he had to hit, that just tells you how many times they repeated that shit. So big up to Biden and Kamala for real. Uh, they came out and did their thing. Bye bye to Mr. Trump. I hope you get locked up. Uh, I hope that... Um, I don't know. You get what's what's what you deserve because what you did uh, to them kids on the border and to uh, just the uh, just America in general. I mean, it was tense here for years since your first day. Since the first day he said all that stuff. Especially, I mean, for me being a Mexican, um, you know, I was born here, but you know, I am what I am. And when I heard him say that stuff about Mexicans that, you know, rapists and drug dealers and whatever, I was like, man, you know, I'm not even going to go into how how wrong it is and how, you know, how much we've come uh, past that and shown society that we are not what he thinks it is. We don't like the average Mexican does not like cartels and all that stuff. The average Mexican is just like any other person out in society, hardworking, trying to make sure their kids are fed and trying to have fun as much as they can and enjoy life. We have a deep, rich culture. I mean, we just had, uh, we just passed the Halloween weekend and for me, that was Dia de los Muertos and I celebrated that by remembering all the uh, family and friends that I've lost. Um, all the P 
people that I've met through the music scene that we've lost. And you got to keep those people in your memories to know what you're here for, you know, what they're missing. Um, you know, if anybody ever has issues, you need to reach out to someone and talk to somebody, you know. I've gone through depression. I think everybody's gone through depression at one point. Everybody hits that low and it's hard to get out of that funk, but it's just like, you know, doing an acid trip and trying to fight your way out of a bad trip when you can see it in front of you. You know, I remember being at one of our parties on acid and rolling a joint behind a speaker and it was pitch black in front of me and my mind was playing tricks on me. I looked down at my toes and I saw what looked like an eternal abyss. Uh, and I knew if I fell forward that I was falling into a bad trip. It was very, 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 uh, it was drugs, right? Tripping on acid, but it made a impact on me to this day. That I still remember it. You know, it was years and years ago, um, but I still remember it. And you know, I I cherish those rave days, man. They were they were really fun. I don't think uh, these kids will understand uh, what it was like to be in a warehouse. Some people might say, big deal, you were in a, inside a warehouse. We were in, we were in amphitheaters and we were in Soldier Field and we are in all these places. But you don't know what it's like because it's illegal. There's that little bit of danger that, that, we, that you got to have in order to, to really feel what it was like. There's a cool meme that says, you know what the missing element of uh, raves versus EDM is crime, which is true. Uh, that's what we, that's what we, that's what we miss. And the guy right here, Rifle MC, uh, he, I met him at these raves. Like we would see each other in the drum and bass room. Uh, we looked similar, you know, we were hip hop kind of kids back in the day and uh, we would see each other puffing blunts here and there. So, I don't know, one day we just ended up talking. And then from then on, we've been homies. And that was in the 90s, the late 90s, 97, 96, something like that at, at uh, Raw 66. And, um, yeah, this this picture here, that was, a, I just played this Twitch channel um, for a crew in San Diego. Uh, it was really fun. There was a lot of heads on there. Uh, big up to all the guys that put that together. Uh, that was a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so currently going on, we got this this podcast going on right here. I do my little 10-minute commentary on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to do some interviews. I'm going to get Rifle MC to come in, and we're going to do an interview. We're going to talk about the old rave days, uh, the old rave spots that we had, Route 66. Uh, we had Catalini, Cavallini's or Catalini's. Um, that spot, as you're coming down the I-55 and you're going to hit Lakeshore Drive, and if you go north, there's that spot behind a gas station. I think it's a public storage now, but we threw two parties there. That place was crazy, man. And um, I know Sun Ra did a party there years and years ago, and I also remember, I think, like, Ron Hardy spinning there years and years ago also. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to definitely get... Rifle MC to come in and talk about that. I mean, most of those parties, we were cooked. I mean, I know I at least did one hit of acid that every every weekend for years, uh, going to these parties and finding the German bass room, hanging out and dancing in the house room. I mean, I grew up on house music, being from Chicago. That's what I grew up on, and that's what on the radio. That's what we break dance to. And to be honest, that's what gangsters listening to here in Chicago. Um, I had a friend, Mike D, come from New York and tell me, hey, man, what's up with these gangbangers playing house music? I never seen that before. I'm like, well, welcome to Chicago, man. It's it's house music central. But uh, 
yeah, being a drum and bass head back in the days, it was so much fun, man. Find that drum and bass room and just planting uh, your feet down and growing roots in front of them speakers if they had a dope sound system. Um, and I'll get into that once I get Rifle MC in and I'll be sharing stories here and there. Um, I might do more than one uh, Monday podcast uh, here on YouTube. So make sure you check in with me here. Subscribe, tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend. And I uh, hope you enjoy. Big up. And thanks for listening. I'll talk to you very soon. And stay inside the ride. Peace.